You know what's sad? I remember back in the good old days, you know, even like 2011, you know, 2010, and I even go 2009 when I was really at a low point with WWE. I remember I would always still get excited for the pay-per-views. That every Sunday when the pay-per-view would come on, when I knew that there was a Sunday pay-per-view, I'd be excited for it. I would be like, you know what? Even though the business is not that good, at least I know I have a pay-per-view to look forward to on Sundays. I'd be so stoked. I'd be so excited to watch that pay-per-view. You know, I'd be pissed off sometimes that I would have to be doing something else on that Sunday and I couldn't check out that pay-per-view at the scheduled time. And especially nowadays, you know, like with the WWE Network, it's so convenient. You can watch it any time. But still, I would have that lingering feeling like, frick, I'm missing this pay-per-view. I hate that I'm missing it. Now, it's just like... I don't care about the pay-per-view unless there's something big going on on it, something that may surprise me, something that may shock me as a wrestling fan. I don't give a fuck about the pay-per-view. The only time I care about the pay-per-view is if a part-timer is in the main event, if John Cena's going for the world title, and if there's a vacant championship tournament. That's the only time I feel interested in a pay-per-view nowadays. The reason why part-timers is because they're freaking part-timers and you rarely see them anyways. I get excited now when I see Brock Lesnar come out and let out his primal scream and does his little dance and he freaking suplex some people. I get excited seeing The Undertaker take 20 minutes to get to the ring. The reason why I get excited for a John Cena world title match is because it's only a matter of time that he ties Ric Flair, so I want to see how the internet reacts to that shit. And also... Cena world title matches are probably some of the more entertaining matches you will watch in professional wrestling because you don't know what the fuck is going to happen. And vacant world title tournaments because, you know, surprise. Because I remember back in the good old days when wrestling could surprise me and be spontaneous and make me say, oh, this is why I watch every week. Now that I, I, I just don't give a fuck. And, and it's clear with TLC 2015. It's just super clear with this one because I didn't even know this shit was going on this Sunday. I was watching Raw replay. Now, the reason why I was watching this Raw replay, normally I don't bother with Raws anymore. I'm being dead serious. I haven't watched a full episode of Raw since probably in September. That was the last time I watched a full episode of Raw. The last Raw that I watched in full was the one where Summer Rae was... <laughs> <laughs> proposing to Rusev in a marriage. <laughs> that was the last Raw that I watched in full, because I was like, I had enough of that. And then for the most part, I just stuck to the YouTube clips, where I would just watch uh, what WWE posts on YouTube, and if there was a clip that I liked, I would watch it. <laughs> that was it. That was good enough for me. And then soon enough, it just derailed that they stopped having YouTube clips that I liked. So I said, nope, I'm done with this shit too. And then I just freaking went to reading the results. And now it's even to the point where I don't even care. I watch other people's reviews because I find them telling the stories more entertaining than the freaking WWE themselves. It's just the WWE is just so bad right now. It's just such a terrible product. And it's so hard to really, really engage yourselves and actually care about this show. It, it, it really is. Because I look at TLC 2015 and I see this card and I say, wow, this card could be so much more. This event could be so much more. I mean, when you think about it, the WWE has bastardized the TLC match by making it exclusive to just this pay-per-view. Back in the good old days, you could have these TLC matches. I mean, they used to have these on SmackDown, all, well, like every once in a blue moon or Monday Night Raw sometimes too, when they would do the Raw Roulette gimmick. But they, they really made it where the TLC match could happen anytime, anywhere. Sometimes it would be a good feud ender match, especially if a guy, he was a ladder specialist, he would choose the TLC match just to spice it up because it's more than just a regular ladder match. It's it's tables, it's ladders, it's chairs, it's oh my! You know, that, that, that's what they made the TLC match back in the day. And it, it was cool to see them, uh, you know, big time shows like the Summer Slams and, you know, the Survivor Series. You know, sometimes the filler pay-per-views would get them because it would make that filler pay-per-view feel bigger. I mean, when you look at the TLC match in itself, the history of it, you know, iconic matches at SummerSlam and WrestleMania X7. You know, you look at John Cena, you want to talk about John Cena's best match. Some will even go and say John Cena's best match is against Edge at Unforgiven 06 in a TLC match. TLC matches are important. The Shield, for fuck's sakes. Yeah, they debuted at the TLC event, but the Shield's debut match 
was in at TLC in a TLC match. Sure, it wasn't a traditional TLC match, but it was a TLC match for God's sakes, and it was a match that people remember still to this day because it was awesome. Now, nowadays, it's like it's just bastardized at this event. You can only see a TLC match at this event, and, and sometimes these TLC matches make no fucking sense. You're like Roman Reigns and Sheamus. <laughs> Fuck. It, it, look, if this was Armageddon, if, if WWE still had Armageddon as their December pay-per-view, I'm pretty damn sure Roman Reigns and Sheamus would be inside some type of fucking steel cage to make sure the League of Nations and the family couldn't get involved. But no, since it's at TLC and it's for the title, we have to have this in a TLC match. I mean, Reigns and Sheamus, th this is a match... They have potential that, you know, could be a good, different world title match. You know, Reigns and Sheamus, to my knowledge, they haven't really touched much. You know, when The Shield and Sheamus, Orton, and Big Show were feuding with The Shield, yeah, they touched a lot. But in the recent years, you know, Reigns and Sheamus have kind of been separated. I don't know, because like I said, I don't really watch Raw, or I haven't watched SmackDown ever. You know, since like Daniel Bryan versus Kane in the street fight. So, I, I wouldn't know how much Roman Reigns and Sheamus have touched. But to my knowledge, they haven't touched a lot. And you would think that, you know, if you're going to have this type of different world title match, that it would be feel like a big deal and people would actually care about it. But you've done such a poor job with Sheamus ever since you turned him heel. You know, he came back at the night after WrestleMania the right way. He started to be the bully to all the vanilla midgets. Die the vanilla midgets. That's what Sheamus was all about. It was fucking awesome. And then you have it where Sheamus is a little pussy. He's like six foot three, two 280 pounds, and he's running away from Dolph Ziggler out of all people. <laughs> Yeah, because that's believable that Dolph Ziggler would scare Sheamus. No, instead of Sheamus being a badass heel, he's just super goofy. He's just a goober. You just look at him and you say, what a fucking goober. And then you look at Roman Reigns. <laughs> yeah, I, I talked about it. Ro Ro Roman Reigns, a guy that Chase Oliver loves to death. The cockfist baby. Now he's Mr. Tater Tots. He makes one good joke on Raw, and all of a sudden he has to ruin it. Tater Tots, Tater Tots. This match is Tater Tots. I hope these fans bring Tater Tots to the arena in Boston. Start throwing it in the middle of the ring during this fucking match. This match is... Like, seriously, Reigns and Sheamus. This feud just started, and now we're throwing it in a TLC match because it's really personal. Oh, Sheamus 515. That was how long the world title reign is. I don't give a fuck. Seriously, who cares? And we all know it's just going to be a stupid spot fest. We all know that there's going to be a lot of bunch of run ends. We all know Sheamus is going to retain. And I look at this match between Sheamus and Reigns, and I just see it, and I say, it could be so much more and so much better. Hell, this feud could be so much more and so much better. They actually did a good job making Reigns a babyface and made Sheamus at least into a somewhat of a better heel. But it says Sheamus is like every other fucking heel on the roster. He's afraid of every babyface, and Reigns... Just like pretty much almost every baby face on the roster. He overcomes the odds on the weekly shows, but on the pay-per-view, you don't know if he will do it. And if he does, whoop de doo who gives a fuck. And if he doesn't, whoop de doo who gives a fuck. That's just pretty much how it is. I already talked about the main event. We haven't even gone down the rest of this damn card. I look at Kevin Owens and Dean Ambrose, an intercontinental title match. Hold up for a minute. Let's rewind it. If you talked about a year ago, that you would see uh, Kevin Steen taking on Dean Ambrose in WWE. That that's kind of a, a little bit of exciting shit right there. You're you're a little bit excited, especially for a, a mid card title like the IC Championship. That's a little bit exciting. It gets you a little bit tingled. You're saying to yourself, "Man, dude, that sounds like an awesome matchup." Now Kevin Owens is taking on Dean Ambrose. It's a year later, and I just don't give a crap. You're doing such a bad job making Dean Ambrose into, like, some... You know, I remember when Dean Ambrose was, like, an awesome baby face, would just do spontaneous crap and all this other stuff. It was fun watching Dean Ambrose. Now it's just pathetic because the WWE doesn't make this guy serious. The WWE doesn't make this guy into a big deal, a, a threat to win these big matches. I don't care. Kevin Owens, he came out to the scene on fire, on hot. I'm a big Kevin Owens guy. You guys should know. You guys seen my videos. I'm wearing those Spider Owens Spider t-shirts. I'm a huge believer in this guy. I think this guy can do good things for your company. But, like, you, you get to a certain point with him. You haven't beat John Cena his first WWE match. Holy crap. Now the sky's the limits for this guy. I'm not saying that he needed to beat John Cena every time he wrestled him. What I'm saying is it's, it's an open avenue for you. 
you you can go back to John Cena and Kevin Owens in the near future, being it that, hey, Kevin Owens has been on this tear, and John Cena couldn't beat this guy. It just shows how good this guy is. But instead, you went the typical Cena feud route where they have three pay-per-view matches. Sure, they're big pay-per-view matches. Sure, in-ring-wise, they're good quality matches. But at the end of the day, it's the same shit. LOL, Cena wins. Who gives a fuck? That's pretty much what you did with Kevin Owens' career. And so now it's like, oh, don't worry. He he won the IC title from Ryback because you were doing such great things with Ryback as Intercontinental Champion. It's all good. It's all good in the neighborhood here. Meanwhile, Dean Ambrose is too busy in a feud with the League of Nations, and you haven't really focused anything about the IC title whatsoever. Why, why should I care? At least when Dean Ambrose was going for the IC title earlier in the year, he had a, a I mean, it wasn't a good reason, but he had a reason. He wanted his, his picture on, at the WWE corporate studio. Sure. Go right ahead. That's, that's a pretty decent reason, I guess. Now, now it's like, why? And we're getting a rematch from, what, last month's pay-per-view? And sure, Owens and Ambrose, nice little match. But really, do I need to see this again? And it's no stipulation either. Not, nothing. It's just just a regular Intercontinental title match. Last year, you gave a stipulation to the fucking garbage man. You gave him a stairs match with Big Show out of all people in the world. How come this can't be a stairs match? What happened to TLC and stairs? Freaking WWE, whatever. Um, what else can I talk about? Uh, Charlotte and Paige. I, I remember when, when Paige was on the main roster and Charlotte was down as NXT as NXT Women's Champion. I was excited, you know, for the future Charlotte and Paige matches. But the thing is, it's not like these women can't go out there and put on good matches. That's not the problem. Like, like people think like the problem is with the women's division is that these women are not getting enough time to put in good in ring action. That, that's not the problem. These these women can work. It's the storylines and the characters of these women. Look, WWE has not known what to do with Paige since the day she came on the main roster. They cheered her at WrestleMania, so they said, you know what? The night after WrestleMania, I should say, when she debuted. So WWE is like, you know what? We're going to stay the course. We're going to keep her as a babyface. But instead of making her an interesting babyface and what made her a babyface down in NXT, they make her this bland, boring babyface. She comes out there and she waves to the fans and she slaps hands with all the little kids. Like, oh, yeah, that's a baby face right there like what the fuck she just feels like every other baby face diva that comes out there what's the difference between her character and natalia's character there's no fucking difference she is the exact same as natalia if you look at it from a baby face standpoint charlotte what does she do as a baby face the same shit that Paige did and then you make Paige into a heel but you make her some weird heel that's psychotic and yeah that was working for a bit then you kind of fall off from that you just make Paige into another generic kill diva. She doesn't like the other divas. She taunts when she wants to taunt. She acts like a bitch when she wants to act like a bitch. And that's it. And now you have this weird dynamic where Ric Flair is at ringside for whatever fucking reason. So that way you can turn Charlotte heel. Whew, that's going to put butts at the seats. Heel Charlotte. Sasha Banks and Charlotte upcoming. Yeah, Sasha's not too busy twerking with the New Day, probably. <sighs> Speaking of the New Day. Oh, man, dude. Fuck. Where do I even begin? You know, they're one of the WWE's hottest acts right now. Like, no question about it. New Day, find a way to be entertaining. Even, even when they're doing stupid ass shit. I mean, they're wearing goddamn unicorn headbands, doing this whole unicorn crap. Stuff that, you know, most... Hardcore, serious, button-down wrestling fans would be against. But somehow, they even got those fans saying, Man, the New Day are freaking funny as hell. They, they do some funny-ass shit. There are tag team champions, and yet it's like the WWE doesn't give a shit that there are tag team champions. We have the Usos and the Lucha Dragons in the New Day in a triple threat tag team ladder match. Holy fucking shit. This is a big time match for the tag team division. This is a match that we should be praising. We should be saying, oh man, great shit WWE. Good stuff for booking us on the card. But it's like you make this match so insane. Uh, like, uh, like, I don't know what word I want to use, but it's a fancy word that Chase Oliver can't pull out of the grammar book right now, okay? You just make it so unconsequential. There you go. There's the fancy word I was looking for. You make it unconsequential because it's like, 
The Usos don't even seem to give a fuck about the tag team titles. They're too busy helping uh, Roman Reigns take on the League of Nations. You're not even featuring the Lucha Dragons like they're viable number one contenders. You haven't featured them like they're viable number one contenders at all since they've been on the main roster. Yeah, sure, Callisto got that big win over Ryback on SmackDown in the WWE title tournament, but that's not a tag team thing. That's a that's a single individual effort by Callisto. There was no Sin Cara there, you know, clapping hands or helping Sin Cara, uh, Callisto win this match. No, it, it was a single individual effort uh, by Callisto. I mean, the New Day are your tag team champions. They're one of the few acts that your fans, like, at least 85% can agree that they kind of enjoy, that they do enjoy. So, why aren't you making this a big deal that they're a tag team champions? No, it's like you trot out the New Days there, say, hey, go out there, be stupid for 10 minutes, entertain the fuck out of these people, and then get the fuck out of the way. That's, that's what you do with the New Day. You don't even make it feel like they're important tag team champions. The Usos would rather be helping their brother, their cousin, I mean, Roman Reigns do his shit, and the Lucha Dragons you don't even feature at all unless they're on superstars. Like, like seriously, like... The, the, the This match right here, I just look at this match and I say, God damn, this is one of the matches that you would invite your buddies go to go come over to watch. You'd be saying, you need to check out this match on the pay-per-view. And Don't get me wrong, out of all the matches I see on this card, this match has the biggest potential to be the show stealer, to be the match where you know people talk about the next day and be a really, really damn good match. But it's just ultimately, who gives a fuck? Seriously, like the Usos win the back the tag team titles. What? Well, what are they going to do? Just feud with the League of Nations, like two teams, or like team that they have going? What, Rusev and, and Bad News Barrett? Yeah, I want to see those matches. That The Usos versus Bad News Barrett and Rusev? Yeah, bring it on. What, 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 I'm supposed to be excited about if the Lucha Dragons win? Like, why would I care if the Lucha Dragons win? Seriously, it's like, Kalisto and Sakara should be so much more as this team, but yet they just feel very non-existent. It's like you should just keep the titles on the New Day at this point and just let, see how long they can keep it. Keep like a New Day counter for how many days they've been tag team champions and just count to 365. That's what I would do until you can actually bring up a team that's somewhat entertaining to the New Day to counteract their entertainers, entertainment. Because really, to be honest here, I look at this, tag, this triple threat tag team ladder match and I expect so much more. Especially with the people involved. You got the team like the Lucha Dragons, a guy like Callisto that will really shine in this match. You got guys like the Usos who could get a big rub in this match. And especially the New Day, who you know people are going to be paying attention to in this match a lot. But yet, this match feels like nothing. And that's sad to me. And that is super duper sad to me. Because if you look at it from the WWE's tag team perspective on the main roster, these are your three best teams. You are the three best teams going at it. These are the three right teams going at it. But yet, this match feels like nothing. It feels like a waste of my time. Because I know nothing good will come out of it. Speaking of waste of time, this eight-man tag team elimination match tables. You know it's bad when my favorite tag team of all time, the Dudley Boys, are in a tables match. And I don't give a fuck about it. <laughs> That's when you know it's bad. The Dudleys are in. A tables match at this pay-per-view and I don't give a flying fuck it's the ECW originals Bubba Ray Devon the Tommy fucking dreamer <laughs> why Well, Rob Van Dam too busy smoking a joint. You couldn't call Rob Van Dam's dumbass to do a job. You gotta get Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> so what? Tommy Dreamer can just go bury WWE on his other House of Hardcore shows or whatever the fuck he does nowadays. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you couldn't bring in Spike. Oh, no, we got one better. We got another ECW original fucking Rhino down on NXT right now. Yeah. Because that helps. Rhino, the man beast. Gore, gore, gore. <laughs> Look, if you're going to send in the freaking ECW rejects out here, you should have just got Balls Mahoney while you're at it, WWE. <laughs> Like, I don't get me wrong, Rhino's a cool dude and all. <laughs> nope. He great worker, underappreciated for sure, but fucking for real, Rhino, Tommy Dreamer, the best you could do. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's just like, yeah, I know Tommy Dreamer, Heart and Soul, VCW, and all that other crap. Fine, I guess he can be in it, but Rhino, really? Can he even make a call for Spike? Just to come up there? Just saying. The run of the Dudley, Dudley family matters. He does. And he would add an interesting dynamic, especially in this match, where the White family have a bunch of fucking big dudes. It'd be kind of cool to see a Spike Dudley get caught spot and Braun Strowman or Garbage Man or whatever fucking idiot wants to throw him out. Hell, make him crowd surf. That'd be fucking sick. That'd actually make the show at least somewhat entertained. That'd be cool. But instead, we have Rhino. Oh, that's gonna be great. And it's like they're facing the, the Wyatt family. Now, the Dudleys versus the Wyatt's. Like, see, like, that match right there should be big time on it. That, that, that match right there should be like, oh, man, I've been waiting for this type of match. But, but it's like the Wyatt family have just been screwed around since they debuted. I mean, we have Bray Wyatt. Luke Harper, and the Garbage Man. They all came in in 2013, guns blazing. They were freaking hot, freaking awesome. Great mysterious character in Bray Wyatt. Yet WWE hasn't done anything to capitalize the momentum of Bray Wyatt. I mean, because Bray Wyatt lost the feud with John Cena. And normally, after that, your momentum kind of falls a little bit. And Bray Wyatt, his momentum fell, but not a lot. He still had a lot of momentum after that John Cena feud. And instead of WWE trying to capitalize with this Bray Wyatt character, instead of trying to make this Bray Wyatt character feel like a big deal, Bray Wyatt is just pathetic. He comes out there, says the same crap. I don't know what the fuck he's saying, but he's saying something. He loses every big match he's ever wrestled in. Yeah, because that, that's going to make me feel intimidated by this guy. He goes out there and he loses. Garbage Man was a guy that you were trying to push as a baby face, but you gave up on, which is good, because he's garbage. Luke Harper was a guy that, you know, pretty much, you can all agree, we can all agree here, very talented, you know, especially when WWE is all about this whole size movement, you would think Luke Harper would be at a bigger spot on the card. I mean, this guy, if you wanted to push a guy as a heel champion, why is not this guy right here? This guy is more menacing than fucking Goober as our world champion. I mean, I... I'm just saying, I don't think Luke Harper is ready to be a world champion, but if you wanted to force a heel champion, because let's face it, Goober, a.k.a. Sheamus, is forced as our world champion. I'm pretty sure Luke Harper would be a fine force, especially if you want to have a heel world champion. I mean, the guy did win the Intercontinental title, so you think it would make sense. Natural progression, winning IC championship, then you can win the world title, but no. That, that makes no sense in WWE nowadays. You win the IC title, kiss your career goodbye. It, it, maybe, like, I don't know if it was you guys, but when, if I ever became a professional wrestler, one of my dreams as a professional wrestler was to win that IC title. Nowadays, if, I think if you're a guy right now, you're like, fuck that. If I win that IC title, I'm kissing my career goodbye. I don't want to wrestle on superstars every weekend. I'm like, no. Uh-uh. Being IC champion is nothing. You, you, most of the time, you forget who's IC champion. Right? How many IC title reigns has Kofi Kingston had? And you have to ask yourself, wait, Kofi Kingston was IC champion? I mean, it, it's, it's so sad that to, to this day, the best IC title reign is still Cody Rhodes. <laughs> like, if you think about it, the, the best IC title reign that you can remember as a wrestling fan in, in 2010 through this decade is still Cody Rhodes. Like, seriously. Yeah, like, name all the past IC champions that we've had since Cody Rhodes. And please try to tell me how any of them have been better as Cody Rhodes. What, one of Dolph Ziggler's random title reigns was better than Cody Rhodes? Get the fuck out of here. Cody Rhodes was like our best IC champion that we've had in a long ass time. And yet he's still the best. Like, the hell. But yeah, yeah, and then Braun Strowman. Who the fuck is this guy and why is he here? I mean, it's just the Wyatt family... Are, are not important whatsoever. They, they just aren't. You, you can say, oh, Bray, Chase, he's still awesome. It doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck. The only cool thing about the Wyatt family is their entrance. And then after that, it's all shit from there. That entrance right there, big time money and all that other stuff. You show that to someone, they think that's fucking cool. Then afterwards, when the match actually happens, you're just like, what the fuck am I watching? And yeah, Bray Wyatt has the cool entrance, but does he have anything else? No. Tired of hearing the same old crap. And it's sad to me that a match like this 
that should mean so much more for a guy like Bray Wyatt should be such a test for the Dudleys to overcome is absolutely nothing. I mean, it, like I said, it's sad. The Dudleys are in a tables match, and I don't care. <laughs> Speaking of this, I just saw this, man. I don't even know why. It's that Del Rio and Swagger, U.S. title chairs match. Oh, my. So much potential. I've said it many times. Del Rio and Swagger was one of the most underrated feuds in 2013. Uh, great stuff between Del Rio and Swagger. I mean, yeah, sure, Del Rio and Swagger. Not the most charismatic human being in the world, but that stuff you right there was great. If you don't get tears in your eyes when you watch that video package from WrestleMania 29. You're not human. That 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 video package right there. Oh, I, I get choked up watching it. When Alberto Del Rio is talking about his damn freedom in this country. Oh, beautiful shit. And now it's regulated to a random chairs match. At TLC for the U.S. title. I'm sure it'll be a good match because Del Rio and Swagger, I think, have good chemistry. But I don't care. I mean, it's just it's just like this feud should be so much more than what it is. There should be mo such a better story being told in this match. There should be such a better conflict between these two characters. It could actually be a good U.S. title match that we're looking forward to. But instead, it's not. I mean, seriously, WWE, you should have just told Cena, hey, get your fucking ass back here. We need something interesting on this card because you're the only motherfucker that can bring interest back to this card. Because let's face it, I'm going to be dead honest here. I think one of the main problems that WWE has right now is that there is no John Cena. Because as much as we want to ridicule and bash the dude and whatnot, at least when Cena's doing shit, there's some interest and some intrigue in it. Because it is John Cena and you don't know what bullshit the WWE is going to pull. I mean, yeah, sure, I guess people can say Reigns has his little Super Cena crap. But really, to be honest, Reigns' interest as like what he's going to do as a babyface is like 10 times less than what John Cena is going to do. At least when John Cena's out there, the crowd seems somewhat involved, somewhat interested in what the fuck he's doing. I mean, most of the time when Reigns or Ambrose or any other freaking babyface out there, they're doing something no one gives a fuck. They kind of give like the yeah. reaction, but at least we're seeing it. At least I know fans are booing or cheering. doesn't matter. At least it's freaking loud in that damn building. There's some energy involved into it. I mean, seriously, yeah, Del Rio and Swagger, what a waste. I mean, like I said, the few should be so much more, but especially with this card and where you're at with the ratings and interest in the product, you would think that this would be the event that you would pump up the Cena train even more, pump up the, the fact that John Cena is returning. Maybe John Cena will have a surprise return and it will get a really weird reaction. Maybe that, that will happen at the show, but I highly doubt it. Cena's probably too busy fucking Nikki Bella. And good for him. He deserves it. I mean, shit, I wish I was fucking Nikki Bella. But, hey, speaking of Nikki Bella, she made the Divas division more interesting than Paige or Charlotte ever will. And that's the truth. Hashtag uh, fearless Nikki. Just want to throw that out there. Shout out to my girl Nikki Bella. But yeah, you know, it's like the, I look at this show and I, I, I named you these matches. This is like, if you look at this show on paper, if you weren't watching wrestling for a while and, and you were just looking at these matches on paper, you would say to yourself, man, this seems like a pretty good show. But the reality is, is that it's not just paper. This is real fucking life. And we've seen how these storylines and these feuds and all this other crap have progressed. And it's just like, who really cares? Who really wins? It doesn't really matter. Like, like seriously, I think the only interesting thing WWE could do at this point in time uh, to make some some buzz for wrestling is to announce that Brock Lesnar is at the in the 30-man rumble at this event. That's what they need to do. They need to have Paul Heyman come out there. Not some stupid little video package. No, you actually have Paul Heyman. Brock Lesnar make a surprise appearance at their show. You have Paul Heyman get in the middle of the ring, cut his usual Paul Heyman crap, and announce that Paul that Brock Lesnar, the Beast Incarnate, is going to be in the 30-man Rumble. Because that, that's the, the only thing that I can find that could be interesting for wrestling right now is that Brock Lesnar being in our fucking Rumble. Or John Cena winning a title just because it's... John Cena winning the title, and there's always buzz, I guess, about that. But still, that's the only interesting thing that I can find from this event is that WWE announces, oh, Brock Lesnar is going to be in the Rumble, and you actually have Brock make a fucking appearance at all. Just so that way you can hype up the Rumble and make the Rumble feel like it's a big deal. 
I mean, the Rumble itself doesn't really need much hyping, but WWE themselves need the hype because they're not doing so hot themselves. <sighs> I know this video was long. I know. I get it. Short intention fans. But the thing is, normally when I do these predictions and previews, I do it in a podcast with my friends and stuff like that. But I, I didn't even feel like rallying the troops for this pay-per-view. I didn't even feel like trying to get my boy JD Bennett to stop streaming to get into the show or telling Ross to get on Skype to get on the show or waiting for Ace at 10 p.m. my time to get on the show. I, I didn't feel like doing that for this show because I just don't give a fuck. And it's sad because, like I said, pay-per-views just be that time where I would be excited. Like, you know, even when I'm down in life or, you know, not having a really good day, at least I knew that a Sunday it would be an escape. Three hours, I can watch a pay-per-view, and I can feel fine with it. Nowadays, it's just like, fuck, I gotta watch a pay-per-view. It's more out of habit. It's more like I'm forcing myself to watch it than, like, I am physically watching it because I find it enjoying. I just watch it because it's like, damn, man, professional wrestling, even though it's down, I hope it can get better, but I know it's not. And I just sit there, and I take it because it's like, it's just, uh, I don't know, maybe it's just... I'm stubborn like that. I even I try to make a bad situation better or something. I don't know. I I, I stick through my Chargers when they suck dick. So I, I I guess I'm used to it. Hell, I'm I'm a Minnesota Timberwolves fan, so I'm used to sucking dick. You know, since '07, I'm used to watching shit. So maybe I'm just you know used to it. I'm just sitting there like, yeah, hey, it's fine. You know, like I guess I'm just used to crap like this by now. So. Yeah, so there's my video. What are you guys' thoughts on WWE TLC 2013? Did I make some points in this video that you found interesting, or do you disagree with me on something that I said? I'm pretty sure most of you guys did. Uh, comment down below your thoughts on this show. And remember, kids, follow me on Twitter at ChaseAlbert68, but that's not all I want to say, remember, kids. Remember, kids, don't take out the trash because you can separate your shoulder and break your damn neck doing so. Have someone else do that for you. I'm Chase Oliver. Enjoy your day, guys. Peace!